Hey everybody, welcome to our new episode of the GPCR in VR video series where we're going to be discussing a medicinal chemistry research study on cannabinoid receptors. And cannabinoid 1 receptor is actually one of the most widely expressed GPCRs in the brain. And uh, yeah, today we have again our special guest, Asher, who's a molecular pharmacologist doing in silico research on serotonin receptors and psychedelics, but also on cannabinoid receptors. Hey, Asher. Hi, Daniel. The paper we're going to be looking at today is from the American Chemical Society of Medicinal Chemistry. And the, the lead researcher on this paper is uh, Dow Hurst, and he works in the Patricia Reggio Research Group. I had the pleasure of working with this research group for a few months, and they were just so lovely in teaching me how to do in silico research. Um, although I'm not an author on this paper, I, I'm, I'm happy to share the research because it's a lot of what I, the framework for a lot of things I work on uh, today. And the general idea of the paper is that basically enantiomers or compounds that have an R and an S configuration have different three-dimensional shapes. And this paper shows how um, a racemic mixture of two allosteric modulators called GAT228 and GAT229 actually mm -hmm. bind to different sites on cannabinoid type 1 receptor and thus elicit different effects um, in the downstream signaling pathways of that, that GPCR. The one in green is GAT228. The one in yellow mm -hmm. is GAT229. And so let's superimpose them to see how these compounds are, in fact, enantiomers of one another. So as yeah, Daniel's overlaying that... yeah. As Daniel overlays this, what we can actually see is that in GAT228 in green, the NO2 group is pointing towards you guys, the camera. And in GAT229, the NO2 group is pointing away from the camera in the back. And you can also really see how the benzene rings are also pointing in opposite directions of one another. Wow, this stereospecificity is just mind-blowing, right? I mean, it reminds you of thalidomide, right? You know? Exactly. Just a slight difference in stereospecificity uh, makes uh, the whole difference, right, in the, the outcome and where it binds and what it does to the molecule and to your body eventually. Right. And that's why it's it's so important to, uh, you know, screen drugs at both an anti and see if one has, uh, let's say, beneficial effects. And, you know, in, in the case of thalidomide, one of them had beneficial effects at alleviating morning sickness and the other one, unfortunately, led to birth defects. Right. Right. Yeah. That was a very unfortunate health issue back in the day that we hope won't happen again. <laughs> So I'm going to pull the menu so we can actually, we're going to be hiding these molecules for now and we're going to be showing our structures of the GPCR receptors, which are right here. And we can see as Asher was mentioning how one of them binds at this site down here next to the intracellular environment, whereas this one binds at a completely different pocket, which is more towards the exterior of uh, the cell. So yeah, um, you wanna make some other further comments, Asher? Absolutely, yeah. So basically what we've got going on with these, these are the same receptor. Uh, as Daniel mentioned, one of them just has GAT228 in the pocket near the intracellular space. And the other compound, GAT229, is actually near the extracellular space of the CB1 GPCR. And I also, for reference, on the orthosteric site up here, I've got this ligand called CP55940, which is a really strong CB1 orthosteric agonist. Um, and, you know, basically a lot of the medicinal research on this is that um, if a drug binds to any allosteric site, um, such as GAT228 or 229, it actually modifies the shape of the orthosteric site. And this can be in one of two ways. It can increase the binding affinity, and that's called a positive allosteric modulator, mm. and, or it can decrease the binding affinity, which we call a negative allosteric modulator. And it turns out to be the case that both these compounds are um, can act as positive allosteric modulators. The, the major discrepancy between the two sites is that the site uh, where GAT229 is bound in 
ye uh, yellow is that this one just acts as an allosteric modulator, so it can only have that function of increasing the bonding affinity of the orthosteric ligand. But this site down here where GAT228 bonds is actually more interesting because by itself it can actually act as an agonist and it can also act as an allosteric modulator. So the, the pharmacology of this site is quite complex. That's awesome. Yeah, let's take a look at the surface of these receptors as, as well. I'm going to just hide. Uh, I'm going to just hide that one, and so we can actually show the binding pocket showing the surface real quick. Yeah, that's so, so interesting how we can develop very precise ligands to these receptors and and just prove. Um, at the laboratory that they work. It's not just a computational prediction, but it's actually being proved in the laboratory, right? Definitely. It's all part of that, you know, research and development, uh, very specific experiments to prove all these things. But it, it's really cool to be part of a team like that, that can do all this cool research and make medications um, that can be used for, you know, severe illnesses. Definitely. Wow. Well, oh, this is really nice. how this fits very well yeah in the pockets yeah and this one has two hydrogen bonds right with one with the aspartic acid over there you can, you can see you the yeah you can see yeah and this other one down here yeah yeah we can see the uh the two hydrogen bonds right one with the the uh, indole hydrogen with aspartic acid, maybe they want the NO2 group and the um, tyrosine, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this is basically like we said, on top of the receptor near to the extracellular space. And here, if we turn this around a little bit, we can actually see through the tunnel how the, the drug is binding there at the orthostatic site. So we can actually scale yeah. it real big and get into the orthostatic binding site as well. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. This part there never ceases to not amaze me. <laughs> this part's great. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, here we are hanging in the orthostatic site. We have the camera over here. There's the camera so it can see us, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, awesome. Let me just go back to normal size if that makes any sense <laughs> show the other one now instead and uh well yeah this one happens to be binding i wish as we said in the other side down here and it actually binds with more hydrogen bonds right it's this 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 arginine making double hydrogen bonding here with this group and then also the histidine so it's probably getting tighter binding in there right yeah, exactly. If you look at that specific paper, if you read the publication, it actually shows that the um, the total interaction energy between the GAT compound and the 228 um, site is about 20 kilocals per mole more stable than GAT229 binding to the uh, pure PAM site. So yeah, it really does um, seem to be a driving force in how much tighter the binding affinity is at the 228 site. Awesome. Okay, well, I think we've covered this study very well, very nicely. And thank you, Asher, for your scientific insights. And um, yeah, we hope we can develop some drugs someday that will help treat people with the uh, kids with this uh, condition. And um, yeah, it's been a pleasure. Uh, thank you again, Asher. And um, we'll see you next time. Thank you, everyone. Bye.